Hey everyone, my name is Mickey. Welcome back to the LaceUp channel. Today, we're gonna do a demo of our LaceUp warehouse application. With any warehouse application, you should be able to receive product into the warehouse, scan product out of the warehouse, and maintain a live on hand in the warehouse so that you can make accurate purchases and fulfill all your sales orders. Now, in the LaceUp warehouse application, there is a possibility to receive purchase orders, scan sales orders going out, transfer product from one inventory location to another, and last but not least, do cycle counts. Cycle counts are inventory adjustments created to find discrepancies in inventory because you're over on product or short on product. Anyways, in this demo, we're gonna cover all these modules. Let's get right into it. So the LaceUp Warehouse application can be run on a Samsung tablet or a little Zebra device that looks like this. This is a TC25. These have a built-in scanner inside and the tablet can normally pair to a little socket scanner like this one. Okay, we'll let that focus. Anyways, these are your two options. Now, to get the LaceUp Warehouse application installed, you go to the Play Store and you look up LaceUp Warehouse. You tap on the LaceUp Warehouse app and there's a set of options in here. You'll see how they range from receiving product, creating purchase order, receiving purchase order, picking sales orders, cycle counting, transferring, and products down at the bottom. So to begin the demo, we're gonna focus on the first button, which is item receipt. If we tap on item receipt, the system's going to prompt us to pick an inventory site to receive against. So I'm gonna go ahead and receive against main. You'll see how I selected that. Now, once that's selected, I hit okay and it'll prompt me, hey, select your vendor. So what vendor am I receiving product from? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the vendor. Let's go ahead and hit test vendor. And when I do that, it opens up a blank screen. Now at this point, if I have product to scan, I start scanning that product and it'll start adding to this blank screen. But because I don't have any product to scan, I'm gonna select the product manually. To do so, I go up here to categories. So up here is a little button called categories. You'll see it right there. We tap on that and then it's gonna ask us for what items we're looking to receive into our warehouse. Let's go ahead and receive some milk goods. So here are the items that this vendor supplies to me. Now to receive these items, we simply tap on the quantity, we input the quantity and we tap OK. Then we input, tap on the quantity, input the quantity and tap OK. And then when we're done, we tap up here. There's our item receipt. So assuming we're receiving these two line items, that's what I've just put into the tablet because I physically received that item from a vendor. Now, to submit that item receipt to the back office and increase my inventory and export it into QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, Sage, or any of those accounting systems, I'm gonna go ahead and hit send, which is right up here. Yes. So it'll say right there, it's sent successfully. That means that my inventory has now increased and that item receipt is now sitting in my system ready to be exported into QuickBooks. Again, QuickBooks is just a place order. It could be any accounting system that LaceUp integrates with. Now that was one half of the operations to receive. The second way you can receive product is by receiving a purchase order. So most of you distributors that are more organized, you create a pre-existing purchase order and put that into your QuickBooks. Then when you receive the product, you mark that purchase order is received and you input the quantities that you're receiving from each of the items in the purchase order. The LaceUp app lets you do that right from the app where you can pull up a purchase order from your QuickBooks and make adjustments on the fly as to what you're receiving. When you're done, the LaceUp app will export that into QuickBooks and mark that purchase order as received. So in order to begin receiving a purchase order, you'll see right here, there's an option that says receive PO. We tap on that. And it's going to give us the vendors that have open purchase orders in the system. So now we select the vendor and it's going to open up a purchase order. You see, we got three chicken breasts from this vendor. That's the purchase order. And the purchase order number is right up here somewhere. There it is. PO number 37. So now let's go ahead and receive this. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this chicken breast item is by weight. Um, we support weighted items and non-weighted items. But anyways, here are the three lines that I've received. And when I'm done, I hit save. It'll highlight in green indicating that I've received in full that line. There are no more lines in this purchase order. So let's go ahead and send this. When we send it, it'll send the purchase order from here to Lace of Back Office. That's gonna go ahead and increase your inventory and prep that purchase order to be exported into your QuickBooks or equivalent accounting system. 
Now that we've done that one, let's do one more. We'll go to vendor one. Actually, let's go to test vendor here. Okay, here's another purchase order we have for test vendor. There is one apple on this purchase order. Let's go ahead and receive that apple in. To receive it, we tap on it. Again, if I had a scanner, I could scan against that apple in real life and the system would compare if what you're scanning matches what's on the purchase order. But let's go ahead and receive one of those. When I'm done, it'll be in green, received in full. And then I send it in. So just like that, we've received two purchase orders into our system. We've exported them into QuickBooks automatically. and We've eliminated all that manual data entry that you guys are currently doing with a piece of paper and pen when you're receiving product. That is how you receive product into the LaceUp system. In addition to receiving product, you can also pick sales orders right out of the LaceUp app. You can scan the sales order to ensure that what you're scanning matches the actual item ordered by the sales rep or by the customer. Or you can use your hand to manually pick the items. Either way, all the adjustments you make on that sales order will go back into QuickBooks and adjust the order in QuickBooks so that you don't have to do it by hand. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick a sales order in the system. To do that, we go back to our warehouse application, okay? And we're gonna tap on pick orders right here, okay? Once I tap on pick orders, it will load up every order in the system. You can see an order right here to customer number one. I'm gonna tap that order and it's gonna give us all the items that are on that order. Now remember, I can go with my scanner and start scanning these items and the system will validate that what I'm scanning matches here. Or if I don't have a scanner, I can tap on the item. So let's go ahead and tap on the whole milk here. You'll see that there were 10 on the order. Let's go ahead and pick 10 of these. Okay, that's picked in full. Let's hit save. Okay, now let's work our way down this list. Let's do the 2%. Sorry about the glare, by the way. It's a protector on this tablet. So that one's not picked in full. You'll see how it turns red. So this one's green because it's picked in full. That one's red. This will create a back order for five. I'm just gonna go ahead and go down this list here and pick each of these items to speed up the process a little bit. So when we're done, the order will look like that. You'll see that all the lines are picked because they're either green or red. Now when all lines are green or red, you'll see on the top right, the finalize button will enable. That finalize button will turn green, meaning that you've picked every line on this order. So to actually send this order back to the system, we hit finalize. Are you sure you wanna finalize? Yes. And then there's a couple options. You can print a packing slip by tapping that print button. We can clock out. The system will always measure the time at which the picker started picking that order and when they completed it. And last but not least, the send button. That send button will send the order back to the system. So let's go ahead and clock out and hit send. So now it's sending that document, that order is going from here back into my QuickBooks system and it's adjusting all the quantities. So remember, we had one item that we changed the quantity from 10 to five, that adjustment is made automatically. So in addition to be able to scan everything out and ensuring that what you're picking is correct so that you don't send the wrong item to the customer, every adjustment that happens on the order is automatically adjusted within the transaction in QuickBooks or your equivalent accounting system, of course. So anyways, that concludes the picking portion of this demo. We've done receiving and picking. Now it's time to move on to transfers. An inventory transfer is when you transfer from a site to another site. This is used a lot in the direct store delivery world or when you have route sales representatives that sell off the truck. So for instance, let's say that you wanna load up 10 cases of an item onto a truck and have that sales rep hit a couple stores and sell right off the truck. Normally that's what a transfer is used for. A transfer can also be used for to transfer product from one inventory bin to the next. Basically, a transfer decreases inventory in one site and increases inventory in the other. So let's go ahead and do a transfer transaction. What we're gonna do is we're back to our warehouse app. Okay, We're gonna go to this little transfer button down here. We're gonna hit new transfer up here and it's gonna ask us from what site to what site. So I'm gonna go ahead and go from main to Ford. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer product from my main site to my Ford site. Ford site is a, a truck that, that one of my uh, drivers drives. So when I'm ready, I hit create. You'll see up here, it'll show you the details. Now we can either scan the product that we're transferring or again, we can add it by hand. In this case, since I don't have a scanner, since I don't have product because I'm not in the warehouse, I'm gonna do it manually. To do so, we go to categories, boom. We go to milk. And let's go ahead and transfer 100 of these. And you can transfer by case, by each, 
it's not really limited to any unit of measurement as long as you have it set up in the accounting system. But anyways, when we're done, we hit add items. And now you can see right here, we're transferring 100 of these and 100 of these. Very simple, right? When you're ready to submit this transfer and have it export into your accounting system, you just simply click this finalize button up here. Again, you'll have the option to print the, the packing slip, which will show you what was transferred. And then you have the option to send this transaction. So let's go ahead and send it and actually transfer the product. Good, transfer sent successfully. We'll hit okay. And now we're back out to the main screen. So we've just done a transfer from the main site to the Ford site. Just like that, inventory has left my main and gone to Ford. That is how you track the inventory then coming out of Ford because you isolate the inventory that you've transferred to Ford and now your sales reps will sell against that inventory until you've reached the final inventory count, at which point you do a cycle count. A cycle count compares what you counted versus what was calculated by the system. Any differences are considered over or short. Let's get into doing a cycle count. So to do a cycle count, we tap on the cycle count option right here. It'll show you all the inventory sites slash inventory locations or bins. In this case, I wanna cycle count my Ford site. Boom. This screen will show me everything that's on the Ford site. If I want, I can go to any of these items and scan them and the system will prompt me to input the quantity or I can do it by hand. Remember, I'm not in a warehouse, so I'm gonna do it by hand. Let's tap on this item right here. I should have seven of these Concha items. So let's go ahead and go to my calculator and let's say that I have, oh, two in the first portion of the warehouse plus two and plus three for a total of seven. So let's save that. Now let's go to another item here. Let's do some flour tortillas. I should have four on this inventory location, but let's say that I only have three. So I can use either the calculator, I could just use the input field to input the quantity, or if I have scanning, I can scan the items. Either way, when I'm done, I can hit review and find the items that I've counted. You can see that I've got one item that matches and one mismatch. In this case, this mismatch is a shortage. I will create a shortage in our system and that shortage will export to QuickBooks or your accounting system as an adjustment. So let's say that I'm done with this cycle count. I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. Inventory sent successfully. So the inventory values on that Ford site have now been adjusted, meaning that you can run a report at this very moment, find out how over short that Ford site truly is. The whole purpose of a cycle counter and adjustments to see whether your warehouse is over or short. All in all, you want your overages and your shortages to add up and equate to zero. Because if they equate to zero, it means that there were some errors along the way, but that nobody was stealing from you. If you are net short, that means that you have some shrinkage. If you are net over on your inventory, this means that somebody's being neglectful and receiving product into inventory without taking it into account. Anyways, that concludes the demo of our warehouse application. It was very simplistic, but designed to help you understand what our warehouse application does. Now, if you're in the market for any warehouse application, make sure that you look out for these different functionalities because these are basic to your success. If you have any questions, hit me down below. I'll make sure to get back to you personally and make sure to ask some more in-depth questions. I mean, maybe I didn't cover everything in this demo, but like for instance, we do lot numbers, random weight items. There's so many things that we do that weren't covered in this demo. Either way, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care.